Welcome to Wesley Impact. This is the television program of Wesley Mission, where we share all that we do in our community services and across our congregational life with you. At Wesley Mission, we're blessed to have a workforce of over 2,400 staff and 4,000 volunteers who together help us demonstrate God's love in real and very practical ways to the people we are called to serve. Later today, I'd like to introduce you to one of our staff at Wesley Mission who has a unique role in sharing God's love with others through our chaplaincy work in the community, including in prisons. His name is Sam Yip. He's not only spending pastoral time with inmates, but also teaching them real life practical skills that will help to ensure they'll be able to live a full and active life once released. Sam has been a member of our team at Wesley Mission for a number of years and also works in our community housing services. After that, I'll continue my message series looking at what it means to be people with sharp minds. That is, minds that are focused on justice in our community, advocating for and empowering the marginalised and those who, for whatever reason, have been overlooked and forgotten. At Wesley Mission, we take working for justice seriously and see it as part of what we are called to do. We have a proud history and legacy in this arena, and I'll continue in my message series later on today. But first, last week, we saw the first part of our Wesley Community Housing Engagement Day. Today is the second instalment of that short documentary. We're at Miller, Western Sydney. Community engagement is where the tenants come together to engage with each other to build community. My name's Darren and I work for the Royal Botanic Gardens. We partner with Wesley Mission, they make contact with us. The program that I'm involved in is called Community Greening and we promote the health benefits of gardening and horticultural therapy. Well, food is connection. Food is where families come together, where friends come together and you, that's where community start. And it's a much more casual situation to, you know, have the chats that you need to and you, you connect over food. Okay, you ready? We're all part of the engagement team and part of my responsibility is cooking the barbecue. We're going to cook up around 50 sausages today. They usually come back for seconds, thirds. It all depends how well I cook it. As you can see that one, it's, uh, it's a little bit too well done, but believe it or not, some people like it like that. What I do at Wesley Mission is property manage. Property is owned by land and housing. We also do look after some of the SDA properties for Wesley Mission. Primary role is to maintain, upgrade, and make sure that we do repairs when required. Just basically keep the buildings in good order and in working order. We came across a tender which was being offered by land and housing and we put a submission in. We won at least three quarters of it. It's all about upgrading the units and some of those upgrades involve um, renovations of kitchens, new flooring, new paints, new electrical items. Renovations are important it's because our tenants living here, because they live here for quite a while, their kitchens have grown old. This was the best opportunity to do the whole complex in one big hit, especially when we've got the funds behind us. Basically what it says to our tenants is that we do care, we are listening. We're listening as, uh, very carefully to understand what they want and what they need. Onion please. <laughs> Onions. Thank you. Okay. Days like today where we get people together around meal, around food, around company are critical. It's about establishing community and connection with each other but also with our team so that we are able to better serve and to empower people to live the life that uh, they deserve, they richly deserve. So we have lots of properties from Newcastle all over Sydney and there's very different stories for each person that comes and nobody is a number, everybody is a person to us and we care about each of their stories. A lot of people think the only tenants that come to live at Wesley Community Housing have been on drugs or 
had problem with drinking, but a lot of the guys here have just been through unfortunate circumstances and it can happen to anyone. You can fall into homelessness. You don't have to have bad choices for things to happen for you to become homeless. Across the board, I'd say the singles are probably more likely to reach out and say, I'm struggling, whereas I think the families are a bit more head in their sand. We will house anyone from 16 all the way through to 100 if they need housing and that they can sustain a tenancy with support or without support. So we're just going to put some mulch on the gardens just to beautify the, the gardens and tidies it up. So in, in between what we're doing with the table, maybe a little bit of planting, we'll uh, look at a few areas in the garden that, that uh, need sprucing up and we'll put a bit of mulch around just to tidy it up. We'll just put the last of this on. Yeah, you throw it down and we'll all throw it. Give me the bag, bro. You know, I work with a lot of people with Wesley Mission and the thing that really stands out for me are the stories. You know, you just, everyone's got a story. You know, you could write a book, you could write a bestseller. Easy. Sometimes I, I, I feel as though I've got more from the activity than they have, because just hearing their stories and, and sharing what they've, uh, what they've been through in their life, it's, uh, it's pretty special. It's been an interesting life, but I won't go into any detail Give about me a it. Cheer, but I, George. It's, uh, I'm, I'm still affected by what my past was in many ways, but um, because I've got a stable environment, I'm able to deal with that in what I perceive as uh, a lot of positive ways. Yeah, just about. I think that's got it. <laughs> All right, well done. Good job, guys. Yeah, OK. It smells great. What can Move I say? On, oh, yeah, it's better. Yeah. So this garden we put in Oh, it was probably three months ago, I think. Yeah. Well, the first time we put it in, we planted a whole heap of herbs and different annuals, like some, uh, some lettuce and some spinach and a few other bits and pieces. Pretty much now ready to pick. Smell yep. that. Yep. Beautiful, ready to go. Right, now we have over here some lettuce. I'm going to take the whole top off then. I'm going to be a bit rough on it today. We've got some parsley over the back. Maybe we yep. can put some parsley in the wrap. We've got a little bit of parsley in the wrap. coming up. It's a, a luxury that I've never had before in this life, being able to walk outside the door, take about 20 steps and pick a bit of lettuce for lunch. Now there's several different varieties of uh, lettuce in here. You might be able to see some of the difference in them. Yeah, Alright, that's a lettuce too, as is this. I got this too, say. Oh, beautiful. Oh, awesome. Look at that, bro. Are these yours? Yeah, the Mexican stuff. Oh, no, they're, they're hot, aren't they? Oh, yeah. These chilies were planted about uh, three months ago the, down on Ashcroft, Harrison Street. George loves his chilies, so he's the go-to person. Anything about chilies, George knows. And he's Mexico. also our taste tester. I'm from Mexico, many oh. countries. Yeah. So what, what are they like, George? They're very hot. <laughs> but he loves them hot. Yeah. I'm tempted. Yeah. yeah. They're hot. <laughs> With the garden, caring for that, growing the chilies, sharing that with each other, the sharing of themselves is like an opening up of who they are and that makes them feel like they trust us to open up and share with what's going on in their lives. Brad's coming with some wonderful things from the garden. Right. We have some basil. Basil? Be very Oops, careful sorry. of the chilli. Oh, chilli, yeah. Yes, they're George's. How hot's this chilli? How hot can anything be? Mm. That's how hot that chilli is. We've got some lettuce, and that's about it. I yes. grabbed a few small leaves of uh, spinach too, which might go nice. Spinach, that would be nice. We've got a grant for healthy wellbeing for mental health, and part of mental health is eating healthy food so that your mental health can be stable. And we find that people that eat a lot of junk food, their mental health tends to be a little bit more unstable but tenants that eat a healthy diet and do regular exercise tend to have better mental health. A lot of people have food from different cultures, so it's also nice to show them what we eat here in Australia. We like to do at my home is do ham, slice of cheese. The guys love the red onion here. So we're gonna use a little bit of the lettuce from the garden. Part of life skills is learning how to eat healthily they can help each other. 
So if somebody's struggling, they're not feeling well, they're sick, then they can make a sandwich or use those life skills to help their neighbour. I think it's important for us to see that every block is different, every person is different, and the way that we help each different block is going to be different from the next. How many drills you got? Your one. We're just putting the uh, slats on this table. Ones that, have, that they painted this morning. I served my time as a carpenter in Joanna many years ago. Worked all the big projects. <laughs> Stopped worked about, I was 66, I was still working. And then the labour hire company said, Shoo. I'll put it right on the end there so you can knock it down. That's it, hold it there, give me a couple of screws. Just put a screw, a uh, with the head. With the head. And I've been doing this for quite, quite some time too, I think. How many years now, George? Five years. Making up all the planter stands and, and different places. It's something that everyone can participate in. It's not just one person or whatever. Everyone can come out and do it if they want to. Nobody's left out. Friendship, trust and community. Since we've been coming to the Miller property, doing barbecues and community engagement. There's been a lot of trust with the clients, each other. We're made for connection. We're made for a connection with one another, obviously connection with God as well. And you know, days like today just reinforce that, provide opportunity for that. For people who might find it easy to stay in behind their door, it gives them the reason to come out beyond their door and connect with others and uh, I think that's critical for mental health, I think it's critical for well-being, I think it's critical to have that hope for the future. Most of these guys here live by themselves and it's really lovely to be able to sit at a table and connect like a family. So that's what I love, bringing the family back to the table and connecting each other in the community with each other. If you would like to learn more about Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can find help in our community services, connect with our church and congregations, discover a volunteer role that suits you, stay up to date on the latest news and information, donate to support our work and help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and subscribe to receive the latest news and information about Wesley Mission directly into your inbox. Visit wesleymission.org.au. Wesley Mission is here for you. Please do be in touch if we can be of help to you, a family member or a friend in any way. At Wesley Mission, we do all the good we can because we believe that every life is valuable to God. And so every person is valuable to us. Every life matters. Our contact details are on the screen now. My guest today is a popular member of the Wesley Mission team, our strategic relationships manager and chaplain, Sam Yip. Sam works across our community housing work. He's a chaplain and also leads a team of 15 people who go into prisons to share God's love and to do so much more. Welcome, Sam. Fantastic to have you with us today. How long have you been part of the Wesley Mission family for? Look, I've been at Wesley Mission for nearly eight years now, and it's been a really incredible journey, uh, starting off uh, working with uh, suicide prevention and now doing these two roles yeah, so you, you have these, these diverse roles. Can you explain for us in a nutshell what it is you actually do? Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's first of all a privilege uh, because I get to live word and deed every day in my work. Uh, so I actually have two part-time jobs at Wesley Mission. Uh, the first one is as a strategic relationships manager, uh, managing the major partnerships for our training and uh, employment arm and specifically working uh, within the prison system as well. Uh, and on the other side, I am a chaplain. Uh, so I'm the chaplain for our Wesley Hospital in Ashfield, uh, for our Wesley Ush services, and also Wesley aunties and uncles. Fantastic. And earlier in, a, in our episode today, we saw some of the work of our community housing team, and you've done some work with them as well. They speak really highly of, of how you've engaged with them. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was the chaplain for Wesley Community Housing for a short period of time, but it was a really, uh, really rewarding uh, period of, of my chaplaincy because I was able to meet such a diverse 
a group of people across a lot of the Wesley community housing sites, all the way from uh, southwestern Sydney uh, to also in the Newcastle uh, area as well. Sam, you, you've got a background in business and marketing, uh, and you've just finished a theological degree, you're training for ministry. You're involved in chaplaincy. For you, what's the heart of chaplaincy work? Absolutely. Uh, chaplaincy is all about uh, connecting with people and seeing people the way God has made them. Uh, they are special. Um, you know, with chaplaincy, uh, once again, we're not meeting people in a, in a stale environment. We're actually going out to meet people where they're at. And that could be, as, as I mentioned before, with community housing. It could be in their homes, in their gardens. Um, and I have a real passion to, uh, to work in the prison system as well. So even going to places that are hard to get into, like prisons, uh, chaplaincy is all about going out there. And uh, it really uh, reflects what Jesus has done. He, he went out there for us. Um, and we get to ex experience that and show that um, with those in the community. This incredible program we run in the, our prison system in charge of your money. Can you talk to us about what's that all about? Yeah, um, the Wesley uh, In Charge of My Money program is a financial literacy program uh, that we have partnered with the Corrective Services New South Wales to deliver in eight different correctional centres. Uh, the correctional centres that we deliver to are, are wide ranging from minimum uh, to even maximum specialist uh, prisons out there. The program is all about uh, empowering uh, inmates uh, with the knowledge and the skills to be able to manage their money while they're actually in jail and also to set them up to be able to manage their money when they leave the walls of the prison. Hmm. How, how long has this program been running for, Sam? Uh, the program has actually been running for around eight years, but we've been running that within the prisons for uh, the past three years. So over the last couple of years, I understand 700 inmates have been impacted by this program. You know, can you tell me the heart of why this is run, what difference it makes? Yeah, it makes a massive difference because when we think about the inmate, that's one individual, but they are connected to so many others. They're connected to their family members. It might be a husband, wife or a partner. Um, they've got their children, they've got their communities. And um, when it comes to money, it, it, it just permeates, it affects a lot of things. Um, whenever I talk to some of the, the men and women in prison and I ask them, you know, what do you think about money? A lot of them say uh, money issues uh, have contributed to them being there. Um, so part of what we do is unpack that. Think about the relationship that people have with money. Um, thinking about how we use money, how we can budget, uh, how we can spend money well. And also making uh, people aware of all the money traps that are out there. Uh, there are a lot of money traps uh, that go on in our community, uh, all the way from different ways to pay for things uh, to yeah. even the issue of gambling as well. Mm. So what have been some of the positive outcomes that you've seen firsthand from this program and how does it, how does it reduce the risk of reoffending? People's eyes light up when they realise that the way they've spent money is related to their relationship and what they've been taught or not taught about money. So those light bulb moments just come up constantly as we are speaking to people in the prisons, uh, but also seeing uh, the, uh, the impact of this outside the walls of the jail. We've seen people, um, you know, call financial counsellors and actually get that help. Uh, we've seen people uh, save up a, a good amount of money while they're in prison and actually use that money to start a small business uh, when they come out. And those are really rewarding things to see. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. Sam, it's been such a joy to have you share with us your passion for the work that you do and the difference that it's making. Thanks so much. I'll be back with you in just a moment. I think people are amazing. We can turn dark to light. We can fly through storms. We can change worlds, but we can't always do it alone. If you need help, we could work together. Find out more at wesleymission.org.au. We are here for you. I'd like to continue a message I gave at our anniversary celebration earlier this year, looking at what it means to be people with sharp minds. That is minds focused on pursuing and achieving justice. This week, I look at what is justice? What does it mean to act justly? And what is required to achieve justice? What I want to do 
today, on our 209th anniversary, is share with you what I believe it means for, be, for us to be people of sharp minds, minds focused on achieving justice. And, and so the first question we have to ask ourselves, or what is a biblical, a biblical definition of justice? And, and that's a big question that has to be said. First of all, the first thing we need to say is that justice reflects the, the very character, the nature, the very heart of God that God is just, that God is perfectly fair. He's perfectly compassionate, perfectly equitable, merciful. God is right in all that God does, that God is just. And so justice or doing justice, achieving justice, is, is very simply put, making right that which is wrong, that which is contrary to the very will of God, the loving intention of God. Justice is making right that which is wrong, making whole that which is fractured, whatever that might be. Now, most of us in this room, and I I would expect many of us online, we are familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. You don't have to be a church person to know this story. The story of a Samaritan man that Jesus tells, who, who travels the road from from Jerusalem to Jericho, and as he travels down, he's trailing behind two religious leaders who, before him, see a man left for dead in the ditch, who's been beaten and left for dead by robbers. And the two religious people, they pass on by, they've got good excuses to keep on going. But the Samaritan man, who's a hated outsider, who's despised by the people in that region, He doesn't pass by, he stops, he crosses the road, he renders assistance at great risk and cost to himself. And and the point of Jesus' story, of course, because he's been asked what it means to love our neighbour, is that our neighbour is anyone who is in need, particularly those who are most in need. Now, I want you to imagine me for for a while, and and what the Good Samaritan, what what he demonstrates here is is a soft heart, a, a compassionate heart. A heart that reaches out to those who are in need, who who gives a hand up, literally. But I want you to imagine for me, for a moment, what Tim Keller suggests we do, that is, that there's a sequel to the parable. And the Good Samaritan, he he continues on his way, but this is a journey he does all the time. He he might be a salesman, I don't know what he is. But he's always travelling the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. And the next week he travels the road from Jerusalem to Jericho and he discovers there's another man lying in the ditch. He goes and renders assistance to him. And he goes the next week and there's the same story. And week after week after week after week, he finds people beaten and left for dead in the ditch. Compassion says that he has to render assistance. And every time, every single time, he renders assistance. But after a while, he thinks, what is going on that this happens again and again and again? Compassion, the loving compassion of Jesus means that we meet the need of any individual. We do it repeatedly. And we do that all the time here at Wesley Mission. But working for justice What this requires of us is to assess and to address the underlying issues that causes the need in the first place. To make right that which is wrong. To repair that which has been fractured. So for me, my definition, my working definition of what justice is from a biblical perspective, justice is compassion demanding systematic change. Or as Cornel West puts it, justice is what love looks like in public. I love that. And justice is what God requires of God's people, doing justice again and again and again in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, all the way through into the New Testament, we see God call God's people, whether it's Israel or the church, to do justice, to be salt and light in a world reflecting the very character and nature of God. I'll unpack more of what it means to be people seeking justice in the coming weeks. My simple definition of justice is compassion demanding systematic change. Next week, I'll continue on that theme and look at what we can all do to be part of bringing about justice for the people who we are called to serve, wherever we might be. Thanks again for being a part of the program today. 
Don't forget to be in touch if Wesley Mission can be of any help to you, your family or friends in any way. Our contact details are on the screen. Remember, we are here for you. The contact details are on the screen right now. I'm looking forward to spending more time with you next week. Every blessing to you and all in your world who you love. Wesley Mission walks alongside people of all ages struggling with homelessness, addictions, mental health issues and financial stress. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.